Hi, I'm Mark from Trinic. In today's video, we're go we are going to cover, start to finish, making a uh, concrete table look like wood. The way we're going to do it is, I had a friend that had some 200 year old barn woods. They're from uh, an old house that uh, they were attic boards. They're really soft pine. And they've got some interesting features. They've got the knot holes, they've got the uh, worn look from being used. We're going to use these as our mother mold. We're going to wax this, prep the mold, cast the rubber today. Tomorrow we're going to strip the rubber and show you how to cast concrete. We're going to cast it, strip it, dye it, and uh, stain it and seal it all in one day just to show you how our mix works. The first step is to prep the mold. We've got an outer mold. Our mold is going to be about uh, five eighths of an inch thick over top of this. Now to keep the rubber from sticking, I like to use Johnson paste wax. And you use a lot of it. You use a lot of paste wax. You could put it on with a brush, or this wood is so absorptive, I like to wear a pair of gloves, really work it in, then a cloth or a soft sponge to take off any excess. You'll use probably, oh, I might use half a can on this. You want your mold to be just about watertight. Any gap, the, uh, the rubber will run through and leak out and will ruin your mold. You can lose your entire mold. Once we get the whole thing waxed, we will start to uh, use some clay caulk and seal up the bigger holes. Yep. As you can see, the wood is absorbing all of that wax we applied. We're just working it out of the uh, heat suppression. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put clay caulk to seal this seam. This inner seam sealed from the other side. We've got a caulk extruder. This is a low sulfur caulk, clay caulk. We'll work it into this seam to shut it up. We're also going to use it any place up top where it looks like the hole goes all the way through. You've got the back side protected. Just for a little insurance, we'll do both sides. We've got our mold waxed and clay caulked. Hopefully it won't leak. We've got it leveled up. And we're ready to mix the rubber. Now the consensus among people that I talk to, Trinix customers, seems to be they like the uh, 7445 when they're making molds that uh, are small like a tile mold it's more flexible than the one we're going to use today which is the 7565. 7565 has a uh, part A and part B it's one to one ratio. A couple things to watch out for that we've learned when you mix it. You mix it in one bucket thoroughly as the best as you can. You don't dump it from that bucket into the form. You take this bucket, dump it into another bucket, remix it. What that does is any residual material that happens to be on the side and not mixed, if we dumped it into the form, it could cause a problem. It might not offset. So we're going to mix it in this bucket, dump it into this one, mix it again, and then into the form. We should have about a half hour of working time, which is plenty for us. We'll mix uh, probably about 40 pounds at a time. Well, since we, we think we're going to need 60 pounds, so we're going to mix, we'll mix 30 pounds at a time. That way we'll make two batches and hopefully we'll get done. I like to batch by weight rather than guessing at all. Try to get us 15 of this. And 
15 of this. You want to try not to entrain a lot of air bubbles when you're mixing. Okay, I mixed it slowly for five minutes so I didn't entrain or entrap much air. And as I said, I'm going to dump it into a clean bucket down the middle. This will be our uh, way out bucket. This will be our dump bucket. And just to be sure, I'm going to mix it for about another minute and hope that all the material is thoroughly blended so we don't have any uh, spots that don't seemingly don't get hard. Your tendency is to want to whip whip it really fast, but you just want to slow blend it. Scrape your edges good. You've got a big investment in rubber, you don't want to screw this up. Do everything you can not to screw it up. Now we're going to pour it into the mold. And he's got our mold leveled up about half. We're going to dump this in and then uh, go ahead and batch out our next batch. This will cover the bottom of the mold. Tell us if it's level. In fact, I want to make sure it covers the bottom. See if it's on level. We'll mix another. Uh, we're over halfway full, so I'm going to mix a. Looking at it, that side is almost full. Then he's going to shim that up a little bit, fix it. I'm going to mix a. I don't think I need a whole one. I'm going to mix a 25 pound batch. I'm going to level that up and mix this. Got some more. A little more, make it all even. We just got done fin finished filling the mold, and overall, I'd say start to finish between waxing, mixing, filling the mold took us about an hour. So it's not bad at all. And we used uh, about 50 pounds of uh, rubber for our mold. Now we'll let this sit overnight. Tomorrow we'll strip it, clean it good, and then we will cast our, uh, our coffee table. You'll see how that comes out. It's the day after we cast our rubber 
and we stripped it, cleaned it, we scrubbed it a little bit with some water and a uh, stiff brush to try to get all the wood grain that was implanted in and out. And now we're ready to cast. What I like to use is Johnson's Paste Wax as a release. Be sure to work it into all the little cracks and crevices. You can use a chip brush if you've got a mold with deep relief to get it in. I like to use an old, uh, this is actually a sponge. You don't want to over apply it, but you don't want to skip any spots either, or you will know about it. There's a couple of choices when it comes to mix design to cast this. If you're only going to cast a few, for instance, if you're a hobbyist or homeowner, I would use Trinix 11K mix. The 11K stands for 11,000 PSI you're going to get out of this mix. It comes complete in a bucket. It comes in a 50 pound bucket. Each 50 pounds is about 0.49 cubic feet. But it comes in two choices, fast set, normal set. The fast set, if you wanted to strip the same day, I would use. Or you could leave it in overnight. As long as you can mix it in a bucket, get it out of that bucket into your form within five minutes, the fast set is fine. The normal set will require overnight curing minimum and maybe some heat in a cold climate. If you're in a cold climate working in your garage, get the fast set. If you're in Florida and you're, you're in 110 degrees, get the normal set. Somewhere in between, whatever you want. To the fast set, I would add an additional 0.75% Trinic plasticizer. What that will do, ordinarily the 11K mix, you can spray it or you can get a workable back coat. By adding plasticizer, you're going to make a self-consolidating. This table will be poured with self-consolidating GFRC with no paste coat. Now, with Trinix Ad Mixers, make it possible to pour SCC with no face coat. You'll see very few of any fibers will show if you do it right. And then you want to add glass fiber. 3% of the total dry weight you want to add in glass fiber. You'll be pouring at a 0 0.28 water cement ratio. It'll be flowable. That, that's what gives you 11,000 PSI concrete. Now, if you're a professional and you're doing this for a living, I would make your own mix. Here's how you make one cubic foot of fast set, self-consolidating mix with Trace Admixtures. 60 sand, 12 pounds CSA, or 20% of Portland in CSA. 48 pounds Portland. 3% Trinx GFRC Admix. This is a very important component. We've designed our Admix to make products such as this. Ultra high performance, higher performance than you'll get out of any liquid polymer. 60 times 3%, 1.8 pounds. Again, we're adding 0.75% Trinx plasticizer. This will give us the flowability and it will allow the fibers not to nestle into the bottom. There's no need to vibrate this. There's no need to roll it. You don't need to do that with our ad mixtures. 3% glass fiber loading. We're going to pour a 0.28 water spent ratio. You're going to have to source your own sand. You're going to have to play with it a little, come up with a sand that works well for you, doesn't segregate, etc. This, easy. Open the bucket, add maybe super to it, fiber, pour it. This, source your own. For those of you already using a bag, bag mix, this mix you can put together and it'll save you 10 to 15 dollars a square foot over your bag mix and you'll have higher performance. We've got our mold waxed. We're going to use an integral color. We're going to go with a light brown integral color. That way when we stain it, we've already got a light brown, we'll just highlight it. The goal here will be to mix it. You'll see Vinny will pan over, he's got everything ready. We'll mix it, get it in, trowel it, and let it kick. We'll be stripping it probably within two to three hours. So right. we're, this is going to be a fast setting mix. Maybe it's got our integral color available from Trinic Dose. We'll give you color formulas to make basic colors. This will save you a lot of money and expense over buying individual colors if you're willing to blend a little bit. He's got his water weight out. He's got all his fiber. That way he can go from one bucket to the next to the next. This is fast set so he'll have about five minutes working time because it's probably 80 degrees in our shop. So you've got to have everything ready, move down the line, get it in your form, 
and you'll be good. Now between Vinny mixing, I like to get my first layer in, work it with a trowel. That'll be close, Vinny, don't? Yeah. That's it, we throw it in. Like I said, those of you that are used to spraying face coats can direct cast with Trinix admixtures. We call it direct casting when you cast directly on. You'll notice self consolidating, I see bubbles coming out. This piece will have few, if any, bug holes at all. Just about perfect, right up the top. As it kicks, I will show you how to finish it and uh, so you don't have to finish the back later. We'll trowel it with just a little bit of water. Here's the key to getting your GFRC backs flat, especially with a CSA mix. Little squirt bottle, trowel. Don't try to trowel it without adding a little moisture. Once you add moisture, your trowel will glide right along. Your fibers will tuck in. As it gets harder, they'll tuck in even more. You can get it so you don't have to uh, grind your back, especially a piece like this. I don't want to have to grind this back. If it starts to pull, a little more water. Now, as the CSA starts to kick, you can uh, keep troweling if you want to. You can trowel a couple more times and get the fiber to really tuck down in there. And it's the back side. You can say you're not supposed to add water. Well, that's true enough, but the back side, you're pouring at such a low water with cement ratio, you almost have to to get it to trowel nice and flat. Now I've got the water mixed in. If it's a little low, you just put a little pressure, bring it to below spot. Wait till the CSA starts to kick, trowel one or two more times, you've got a nice, flat, a nice flat back. Now with the CSA mix, you don't have to wait long. It's been about 10 minutes since I last trowel. As you can see, it's already getting hard. There's never a reason to bring your trowel up on edge when you're troweling back. You just want it slightly angled. That way you're, you can see the fiber, but it's not going to stick out and poke somebody. Piece of sandpaper on this back, and I'd be ready. And it's nice and flat. You don't need to process it. That's it. Once it kicks a little more, we'll put plastic on, insulate, and we'll strip probably within two to three hours. The next thing you want to do, as soon as it's ready, it won't leave marks, start to generate all the heat, get plastic on it. Don't let it lose moisture. Alright, since we're going to strip this today, I'm going to lock my heat in. You don't need to do this if you're waiting for the next day, or if it's really hot in your shop, you could damage it if you lock too much heat in. But I know this won't go above, say, 120. 
120 is fine, 130. I'd start to worry about 140, 150. We'll be back in two hours. We'll strip it, uh, stain it, seal it. We'll have a table. It's been two hours since we cast it. We covered the plastic. It'll go through a heat, what I call a heat signature. You'll notice it'll heat up and then it'll level off. It might go to 120, then all of a sudden you'll see it dropping. And it gets good and hard. If it was a very large piece or thin, I might want to leave it in a little longer to keep it from warping. But since this is a thick piece, thicker, Now because I trout it, the back isn't perfectly smooth, but there's no reason you have to grind this back. Uh, give me give me a hand. Make sure. Because we waxed our mold properly, it strips right off of there. Keep coming up with it. Okay. Beautiful. Take a 60 grit and I'll work my edge. Clean that edge up and then we will start to, we will start staining it immediately. Because we used wax as a release and we're going to use a lithium silicate based color, we're going to go over this with acetone. Hopefully get any residual wax or whatever off of it. Now those of you who haven't seen The Joy of Painting on PBS, I suggest you uh, start to watch it. Your technique's going to be similar to his. Don't worry about what you do. Anything you can do, you can fix. What I like to do is just start with colors. This is a reddish color. And then work it. Same way you might stain a uh, wood table. So you can see it doesn't take long and you're already popping color. This is a little bit too red for me, so I know that I'm going to go over it with this color of reddish. And I'm going to really sink some black into this table. Since these are lithium silicates, you're densifying while you are uh, coloring. Make sure you hit your edges too. The key is going to be building layers of color. I mean, it already looks like an old piece of wood. But the more layers of color you build, the better it's going to look. That's why I went with a base tan. I really like that base tan.
Man, that's really, the more you rub, almost the better it looks. This is only color one. Let's see what else I've got here. Let's try on. Oh, this is about the same. Got a black. I'm going to work just a little bit of black throughout the piece. Here's another method. Wipe a little on. Work it in. I really like to let that black settle in the deep crevices. Start scrubbing. What I'm going to do now is highlight some of my knot holes. The way I like to do is I take some concentrated black that hasn't been diluted, just get a tiny bit on your finger, and work the knot hole. Work it out from the knot hole. You actually want, without a light, there can't be dark. So what you're doing is you're adding dark to the depressions and you're wiping so it makes the surrounding wood light. It makes the knot holes look like they've been using sap for 150 years. Gives them a little bit of pop. Maybe this joint should be darker. That, it already has depth. This adds more depth. Any spot that looks like it should be a little deeper, you can darken and you'll start to get a three-dimensional effect. Here's another knot. Maybe this joint between them should be darker. Just by that uh, simple highlight, it gives it depth. This is just full strength color, it's very strong. You could actually do the whole table in this if you wanted.
I'm thinking we're almost there. Step back, see if any part of it looks fake. To me it's looking good. The high spots have the color worn off. Maybe a little bit more. And maybe this needs a little black, but it's up to you, whatever you want. It's been about an hour since we applied our stains and uh, we can seal it. We're going to use Trinix Stamp Shield. It's a high quality, uh, low build solvent based acrylic with a silene, S-I-L-A-N-E component. That means it has excellent grip and it breathes. If you don't over apply it, it remains breathable. That's why we can seal the day that we cast. You can roll it or for the deep grooves, you may want to brush it so it gets into it. I'm going to roll real quick. You can dilute it. In this case, I'm diluting it about 25% with xylene. The reason I'm doing that is because this concrete is so dense. Stamp concrete, don't dilute it. Here, you may want to dilute it. I like to hit my edges first. And then hit my top. On a day like today, you could actually deliver this table this afternoon. I like to push a little puddle ahead. That way you make sure it's going down into all the grooves. Push it off the end if you need to. You don't want to leave big puddles behind. And you can use two coats. This one I'm going to give a coat, see how it looks. And uh, possibly give it another coat. You don't want a thick build, but you do need complete coverage. I'm pushing it ahead the way I'm doing. I know it's getting into all my grooves. If the groove's too deep, take and work a little out. The reason I like Stamp Shield for a table is this table can now be used indoor or outdoor, wherever you want to use it. If it ever needs a repair, it's a matter of uh, wiping down the old, rolling on a new coat. Yeah, I need a little bit in there. The rest of it I'm going to let flash off and see how it looks.